Now throwing a little shade can be entertaining in the right context, but when something throws shade on our solar panels, those of us who live off-grid don't find it all that funny. So shade from any source can significantly reduce solar energy production. As the Earth changes its orientation to the sun throughout the year, something that didn't cast a shadow in the summer may now cause problems in the fall, winter, or spring. If there's a shadow, we can always just move our rigs, right? Well, that's not always an option, depending on where you camp or park your boat. You might not be able to fully remove shading from the solar equation. There's almost always going to be trees, wires, masts, rigging, power lines, whatever. But what if there was a solar panel designed to deal with shading? Today we're going to be testing Renogy's 200 watt Shadow Flux anti-shading solar panel against a traditional Renogy 200 watt rigid panel. Renogy's internal testing suggests that when more than 25% of the older panel gets shaded, it stops producing power altogether. But the Shadow Flux will still put out 135 watts of power under specific testing conditions. We're going to see if we can get any kind of results that look like that. The Shadow Flux is the market's first N-type solar panel that enhances shade tolerance at the solar cell level. Now, N-type solar cells are slightly more efficient and perform better in both lower light conditions and higher temperatures than their PERC solar cell counterparts. But they're a little bit more complicated to manufacture, and so as a result, they're a bit more costly. The Shadow Flux cell is constructed with 16 bus bars versus 9 bus bars in the traditional panel cell. This means that there are more pathways for the current to move around any shading within the cell itself. So the Shadow Flux should continue to produce power in shading conditions when other panels stop working. Also, those bus bar pathways are shorter in length, which reduces heat loss and minimizes hot spots created by any shading or dirt on the panel. Now the Shadow Flex cells also claim 25% efficiency, which is right up there with the industry leaders. Now this claim isn't something that we can really test, except for in a side-by-side -side performance evaluation under similar real-world conditions. And this is where the rubber meets the road for the user anyway. The Shadow Flux panel is 7% smaller, 10% lighter, and it's just a little bit stronger with a thicker aluminum alloy frame than the standard 200 watt rigid panel. And of course, the Shadow Flux panel meets the same waterproof rating, hail resistance, power output, and manufacturer warranty of all of Renogy's solar panels. Nerd alert! If you want to understand more about what happens to panels when they are shaded, check out the blog in the video description below. We'll be testing these two panels in the same light, the same atmospheric conditions, same insulation, same time of day, and in the best sun possible, and with the same shading. Now it's December right now, days from the winter solstice, so the sun is at the lowest angle of the year. So we're not going to see the same summertime power output, but this is real life, and we're testing in the best possible conditions during this time of year and our location. Because of this, we're less concerned with the actual power output on either panel, more concerned with what happens to the panel when we throw shade on the surface. Now we're using our 100 amp hour mini core LFP battery combined with a 50 amp DC to DC charger with MPPT solar inputs as the charge controller and a Renogy One core monitor to show the power output for each panel. Let's get to testing. We took our testing kit to a large open parking lot so we could get the best possible sunlight on the three clearest days in a two week period. Even on these clear days, we had variable conditions with some high cirrus clouds or passing stratus clouds, which slightly impacted our results. To alternate between panels, we used a selector switch to isolate the panel which was charging the battery. Prior to testing, we drew the battery down to below 30% so that the charge controller wouldn't limit any charging amperage during our tests. The only draw on the battery was the Battery Shunt 300 and the Renogy One Core monitor itself, which are less than about half an amp combined. To start, we put the panels out in a flat orientation, which is common for both RVers and boaters. After establishing baseline measurements, we began applying various shading elements such as a dowel rod, tree branch, and sections of cardboard to simulate various percentages of shading. After the flat test, we raised the panels to an approximate 55 degrees to compensate for the sun angle in the winter here in the Blue Ridge Mountains of North Carolina at 36 degrees north latitude. We then repeated the shade testing with the panels in the angled orientation. 
With no shading, the panels produce an equivalent power output at around 6 amps or 80 watts in a flat orientation and an average of 12 amps or 160 watts when angled. This became our baseline for all other testing. With 10 to 15 percent of the panels shaded using a dowel rod or a tree branch, we noticed a small drop in power production in the flat orientation for both panels, but there was no significant difference between them. Whereas when the panels were angled, there was virtually no difference in the power output on either of the panels. Now the takeaway here is that during the winter, it does make a difference if you can angle your panels appropriately, as both panels seem to be able to deal well with minor shading when angled. Keep in mind, while our test is just a moment in time, one to two amps of power output over several panels and over the course of a season could be significant. The real difference between the panels came when we applied shade to 25 to 30 percent of the cells on the panels. With 25 percent solid shading, the Shadow Flux panel outperformed the traditional panel between 16 and 21 percent. In the flat orientation, the Shadow Flux still produced 66% of baseline at 3.7 amps, which is 52 watts, whereas the traditional panel only produced 45% of baseline at 2.6 amps, or 37 watts. In the angled orientation, both panels, unsurprisingly, did a little bit better. The Shadow Flux produced 73% at 8.6 amps or 118 watts, and the traditional panel produced 57% of baseline at 7 amps or 97 watts. Now with just 5% more shading added at 30%, we discovered the clear winner. In both orientations, flat or angled, the traditional panel stopped producing any energy when about a third of the panel was shaded whereas the Shadow Flux panel continued to produce more than 50% of baseline with 3.1 amps or 44 watts in the flat orientation and 5.6 amps or 83 watts in the angled position. Here's another look at our full results table. So is the Shadow Flux worth the difference in price? Based on these results, we saw equivalent power outputs on the panels with little to no shade. But when we applied 25 to 30 percent shading to each panel, that's when the Shadow Flux significantly outperformed the traditional panel. Now multiply this improvement by multiple panels in your solar array, and you'll really start to see greater energy production. So if you're going to be camping, living, or boating in the real world where shading could be an issue, like all the time, unless you happen to be in the middle of the desert, Shadow Flux is going to allow you to produce more power with a smaller, lighter panel, making it more efficient overall. So thanks for watching, folks. If you found this video helpful, check out our other videos on solar and off-grid living and subscribe. And be sure to use our promo code CANDLIFE for up to 10% off all Renogy components. See, See you on, on the, the road. road.